G'day everyone, thanks for tuning in today as I discuss the Nikon D750 versus the new Z6 for real estate photography. So last year I did a video on my comparison between my current setup which is a D750 and the new Nikon Z6 and Z7 bodies. And I was looking specifically at the Z6 and whether or not um, it would be a consideration for someone with a D750 to upgrade straight away to the Z6. Now pretty much at the time I came to the conclusion that you know it's not really that important to upgrade if all you're doing is shooting real estate photography and if you currently own a D750 with uh, say the 14 to 24 or a Tamron 15 to 30, which is also an excellent lens, or even a 16 to 35, which is not as good as those other two lenses, but still a good lens. And the D750 itself is an excellent body, full frame, 24 megapixel. It has uh, excellent dynamic range, which is handy for real estate photographers who need to shoot in extreme lighting situations, which happens to me all the time. There's plenty of situations, for example, where I'll be shooting the front of a house, uh, and I have the sun behind the house, right above me, and I'll literally be having my finger up, you know, over the lens blocking the sun and then taking some exposures to get rid of the uh, the flares that the 14 to 24 creates which are huge and, you know and then taking some shots without my finger and some shots in between to make sure i get the right exposure of the sky and often in those situations we have massive uh, differences in the in the light and shadow and the dynamic range is huge and that's a real issue that we come across as real estate photographers you know for a lot of other photographers portraits um for instance, portrait photographers take them for an example, you know, in a studio, they have their lighting set up like I have for this video. Uh, and, and it's a static lighting setup and may change a little bit here and there, output might change, colors might change, etc., etc. But essentially, you're not gonna be dealing with massive amounts of dynamic range. And when you have, say, low key portraits, you want those shadows to go dark, you don't really care about them. But with real estate photography, you know, uh, my particular style, which I go with, which a lot of people go with, is to make the houses look bright and to bring as much detail as we can in. Because, you know, you know, bright, more high-key shots just are more pleasing and more attractive shots uh, for buyers for real estate. So that's kind of why the D750 is a great camera, because of that dynamic range. You're able to pull up shadows and not get any noise in the shadows at all, almost, which is incredible, which means, you know, I can have like a dark exposure for the front of a house. I can pull the the sky down a little bit and then I can push the exposure right up and the shadows right up and get some really great detail and then blend that also again with another lighter image to get um, better quality detail in those darker areas etc. So that's why I love my D750. So if you were just shooting real estate photos and you had the D750 currently with a 14 to 24 or 15 to 30 Tamron, there's really no need to upgrade it if all you're shooting is photos. However, I did discuss in my previous video that I also do video for real estate agents as well. Now, I don't do a lot of it, but I do do enough of it every year that requires me to have a, uh, a, another kit for my real estate video. Now, what I had was a Sony a6500 with a 10 to 18 mil Sony lens and the 18 to 105 mil Sony lens as well as a Samyang um, T2.2, I think it was, Cine lens, just in case I needed to get something a little bit more low light, a little bit more light into the lens. And that kit served me well. I was able to shoot good 4K video with that kit. Um, I would use the 4K 30p hack. So, because I'm in Australia, we use 25p PAL. But if you set your camera to NTSC 30, then you can shoot at 30 frames per second, and then when you um, interpret that back to 25, or sorry, to 24 frames, and our output is 24, if I, re if I interpret 30 to 24, you get, I think it's like a 30% reduction in your speed, so it's not like two times slow motion or anything, but it's enough just to give you a little bit extra smoothness. And 4K for me was important with that camera because I'm not the best with a gimbal. I don't use a gimbal every day. I'm not a professional video shooter in that sense. So my, I'd always have a little bit of trouble with my gimbal even getting you know, nice flat shots when I'm walking with it. I'd get the up and down movement, which is quite common with gimbals. And what the 4K allowed me to do was to crop in a little bit and stabilize in post and get really nice, smooth footage in post. Now you just can't do that if you're shooting 1080, obviously you're cropping in more than 1080, so you're losing quality. And my output is, was a 1080, 24p video for the agents, but my initial input was 4K so I could stabilize that footage you know, in post-production. So that kit was important to me. I had to buy that to shoot videos because there was a couple of uh, accommodation agents that I shoot accommodation videos for. So that's just basically just videos of properties for holiday rentals. And I would shoot probably about 
10 to 12 of those a year. Now, my um, first question with upgrading to the D750 was a financial question. It was basically, why would you spend all that money to upgrade a camera if the current camera you've got serves your purpose 100%? And my answer was, you, press, you just wouldn't. You know, It doesn't make financial sense. It's really just a bit of gas, a bit of gear acquisition syndrome that makes you want to upgrade that camera. However, because I shoot video, I have a whole separate kit. So that kind of weighed into my considerations with whether or not I would consider consolidating all my kit down to one set of bodies. So say I have, so, so I have, for example, my Sony with my Nikon bodies. So the Z6 basically gave me that option of uh, being able to shoot photos and videos with the same body and get nice crispy 4K video and 24 megapixel beautiful stills with the same body. So I would essentially not have to take a whole nother bag with me at my shoots. I would be carrying obviously less gear and also it'd be smaller and lighter gear so it would be easier to cart with me. And it simplifies my, uh, my gear cabinet in that sense. So when I go out to shoot a video for one of these people and I'm taking photos as well, I don't have to take photo cameras and then video cameras and photo lenses and video lenses, etc. if you know what I mean. So that was always a consideration for me. Now the reason why the, the, uh, the Z6 wasn't a huge draw for me initially was the fact that it was launched with a 24, 70, a 35 and a 50 mil uh, lens. And um, those lenses, well, the, those ranges really aren't that useful for real estate photography. The 24, 70 is um, for some extra shots. And there's times when I'm at the front of a house where I'll be shooting at 28, 30, 35, or even 50 millimeters sometimes if I wanna zoom into the front of a house to get uh, a better shot of the externals. That does happen from time to time. And I, you know, I use a telephoto lens from time to time as well. So that lens would be useful sometimes, but the primary lens is my 14 to 24. It's an ultra wide. And the thought of, I mean, buying a Z6 body and then just taking my 14 to 24 and putting on it, well, I mean, I could do that, but uh, I looked at the gimbal that I currently have, which was a Xeon Crane version one, then I realized I'd have to upgrade that anyway to carry that set up to shoot video. Um, and I just, I don't know, it just didn't really grab me initially. But then Nikon released this year, at the start of the year, they announced they were going to release the first two lenses for 2019, which was the 2470 f2.8 and a 14 to 30 millimeter f4 ultra wide with a flat front element with an 82 millimeter filter thread. And, and immediately that grabbed me. I, I, I straight away, as soon as I realized they were going to uh, launch that, release that lens by the end of April this year, immediately made me rethink my strategy for upgrading my Nikon system. So long story short, that was my first, this is my obviously my current, sorry, my current setup. That's the Nikon D750 with the 14 to 24, and that's a great system. But now I've actually purchased the Z6. So I've got a Z6 now with the, the, um, the kit 2470 lens, and I have the 14 to 30 millimeter lens on pre-order um, hopefully it'll be delivered in about two to three weeks, something like that. So I've been able to recoup the entire cost of the Z6 with the 24 to 70 body just by selling my Sony gear and I've got a little bit extra left over, which has enabled me to invest in a bigger gimbal. So I've had to buy a Moser Air 2, to, which is a, a better option to support the Z6 with the wide angle or the 24 to 70 for that matter. Now the next consideration for me after video was also to do with the timeline for the Nikon Z lenses. Now, Nikon themselves have put out their lens roadmap, and you can see that, obviously you can see the lenses that they're gonna to plan to release in the next year and two years. And interestingly, one of the lenses they're gonna be releasing next year is a 14 to 24 f 2.8. And what that made me realize is that Nikon is not planning on upgrading the 14 to 24 f 2.8 for F mount anytime soon. They're gonna be introducing a completely new 14 to 24 f 2.8 for Z mount. And that was another consideration that made me kind of realize that maybe Nikon isn't going to keep going with F mount as much as people think. Maybe they're going to uh, really start going towards Z mount and producing uh, new lenses for Z mount to match their current uh, Pro 2.8 lenses for F mount, which means probably the 2.8 F mount 20, uh, 14 to 24 isn't going to get an update. Now it is an old lens. It's 11 years old this year. Uh, it was released, I think it was 2008 with the Nikon D3, correct me if I'm wrong. It is an older lens, but it's still a great lens. There's nothing wrong with the lens. It is incredibly sharp, corner to corner. It has incredibly uh, well-controlled coma and things like that in the corner. So 
uh, out of focus areas in the corners don't go too overly and all that sort of stuff, which is, really doesn't matter for me too much. But what matters for me is corner to corner sharpness, especially wide angle. And in that in mind, the 14 to 24 is still, that is still an excellent combo. That lens and camera body is really an excellent combo. But like I said initially uh, in my first point, I, I do video and the consideration of being able to, to um, consolidate all my gear into one kit and the fact that they released the 14 to 30 and also now the fact that they are going to re release a 14 to 24 2.8 for the Z system, they're considerations because they're kind of taken into account. Now there is one last consideration for me and that was my 14 to 24 millimeter lens needs repairing. I know it's not really good. So I don't know if you can see that really well, but there's actually a big chunk missing just there. And unfortunately for me, my whole tripod took a dive. Um, I was on a job. Now this actually happened two weeks before I filmed the first video of mine between uh, on the comparison of the D750 with the Z6. About two weeks before that, I was on a job and I put my tripod down and the front leg bowed under, I didn't realize, and it fell forward onto the floor. Now, luckily for me, they had a really thick rug, otherwise it would have actually damaged the floor and I would have, um, that would have been really embarrassing and I would have actually had to do something about that for the vendor. So uh, it landed right on the pedal hood, it shattered that piece off and it didn't damage the lens initially. I thought, oh, you know, maybe it's okay, maybe it's not. You know, I, I doubt it because it's a heavy, it's a heavy piece of kit with a heavy tripod head and it's come down, hit full speed into the floor. And sure enough, it's been deteriorating. The actual autofocus has been playing up worse and worse. I think I've, I've obviously done something to the autofocus, or the focusing mechanism that is. And it's currently, it, it has trouble sometimes finding focus, even on basic things with good contrast inside the house. I never used to have that problem. And also when you move focus, you can sometimes move focus from say 0.5 of a meter through to halfway to the meter mark on your lens and the focus actually doesn't change, uh, which isn't good. That's, I don't think they're supposed to do that. Um, the field of view changes because there's a bit of focus breathing in this lens and you can see the field of view changing, but the actual focus doesn't change. So it's like you turn the focus for a little bit and you see no change and all of a sudden it starts to change. Um, yeah, and that coupled with the fact that the autofocus is starting to not catch things um, and I'm having to adjust it manually all the time uh, is driving me up the wall and I'm going to have to send this poor old lens to Nikon and have them fix it. Hopefully they can uh, realign the lens mounts in it, like the actual lens elements, whatever they do, um, and fix that autofocus. Hopefully it comes back to me, um, you know, sharp corner to corner because I have, actually have noticed that one of the corners isn't as sharp anymore as it was so, basically that's the reason why I've gone from uh, just basically shooting uh, full-time with the D750 14-24 and why I'm now moving towards the Z system. Now the last consideration I guess is the, um, is the SD card, you know, the single SD card slot. As a professional, I've heard photographers say that no professional should use a camera with one card slot. And uh, I, know, I know it's less like shaming, it's like the thing on the internet these days to shame people and I just don't get that. It seems to be popular to um, to take the high moral ground on something and then shame everyone else who doesn't agree with you. It's just really weird. But but look, I've used cameras in the past with one card slot. I understand the risks and the limitations of that and I'm willing to take that on board. I use the uh, Sony a6500 for professional video work for accommodation property managers for years. And um, I never had a card fail in that camera. I have had cards fail, and I think I discussed this in my previous video, you know, it's, you do have cards fail from time to time, but for me, they're always micro SD cards with the number one cards to fail, micro SD, they're terrible. Um, and for the SD cards, my only SD cards that have failed are cards that I've accidentally ejected while they were riding, and it wrecked the card. Um, apart from that, I've lost more data um, through a hard drive malfunction on my computer that, that nearly wiped out an entire client's work from eight years worth of work for an entire client. I nearly lost a whole lot um, when a drive failed. Um, so there's all kinds of risks for data. It's not just in your camera. So look, I'm willing to take on board the risk that the Z6 has for, for um, only having one card slot. With that in mind though, look, these, these uh, cards, these uh, XQD cards, they're really solid cards. I really like them. Uh, they remind me of compact flash cards I used to use all the time with the um, my D810 and also with my old uh, Canon 5D Mark II. You know, we used, I used Canon, I used uh, compact flash cards for years. And compact flash cards, you know, I never had a single compact flash card fail. Now I did have compact flash cards that didn't um, perform properly, and they were cheapos that I bought off eBay. 
of all the SanDisk ones and the Lexar ones that I bought, I never had a single failure. So uh, I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with these uh, cards for the Nikon Z6 with these XQD or CF Express when they update the firmware. I don't think there's gonna be a problem. Um, but for me, the precautions I'll obviously take is when I'm going from job to job during the day, I'm gonna have one card, I'll do a job, I'll take it out. Next job, I'll put a fresh card in, shoot the next job, and I'm just gonna keep doing that. Uh, hopefully Nikon does address that in the next body. Hopefully they put two card slots in the next body, or at least give you some kind of option for recording to two slots. Now, when I'm shooting video of this, that's that's not gonna happen. I mean, Sony doesn't even do that. So you, you'll be shooting video. Um, initially, I'll be shooting video internally to the XQD card, um, but eventually I'm gonna purchase an Atomos recorder so I can shoot F-Log out um, because yeah, like, like real estate photography, real estate video, you're gonna have extreme lighting situations from time to time which require a little bit more dynamic range. So to cut a long story short, that's where I'm up at the moment. That's uh, where I've gone to in the last few months. So I purchased the Nikon Z6 and I'm gonna be working with that. When I get the 14 to 30 millimeter wide angle lens, I'm gonna be shooting that on jobs, testing it out, giving it a real workout to see how it works. And I'll probably post a video then just to talk about how I feel about that combination for real estate photography. So thanks for watching today. I hope this wasn't too long-winded. I hope you got something out of this discussion and I hope it gave you some food for thought about your own gear setup. Just remember, if you're a new photographer, you can go with either system. Uh, honestly, once the 14 to 30 comes out for the Z6, it's gonna be a great option. The Sony a7 III is a great option. Um, let me think with Canon, you can, the Canon is a good option. Uh, you can get that 11 to 24 lens, that's a pretty good lens. You can put that onto a Canon EOS R or something like that, that's a great option. And the D750 with the 14 to 24 is an amazing camera and it's a really great option. It is still relevant today as much as it was when they first came out. But anyway, that's it. I'm gonna stop rambling. Thanks for watching again. Any questions or comments you have, just feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video and I'm out.